So we're, this is 9B notes, example number 4. Okay, it's, it looks different than it does on your notes. I've added some things to help with explaining the problem. Okay, so the first thing that I want to point out is that now we're looking at whether or not two events are independent or dependent. And this is the formula that we use. Okay, now what we learn is that if the sides of the equation are equal, then the two events A and B are independent if they're equal. If they're not equal, then A and B are dependent. So that's the question we're asking. Are those two sides equal? Are the two sides equal? And again, if they're equal, the two events are independent, not equal, dependent. Now we're going to use the chart from number one and answer some questions here. All right. The first question is, what's the probability of being in 10th grade? The probability. Now, what I want to remind you guys about is that when we find probability of some event, A, you want to think of this as a specified outcome or a category. We're going to look at a fraction. And the top is always going to be the number in that category A over the total number, the total number of possible outcomes. So the total number. Okay. So if we're looking for the probability of being in 10th grade, we want to get the, t the number in that category. The number in the 10th grade category is 605. So that's going to be the number on the top is 605. What about the number on the bottom? What's that going to be? Well, that's always our total number. That's always our big grand total of everything. Okay. And in this case, it's 1571. All right. So the, the number on the bottom is 1571. And guys, as you can see, I wrote it with a backslash because that's the way you can put that into the computer when you're answering the problems on the test. What's the probability of being male? Well, again, we need the number in that male category to go on top. And the number in that, the total number of males is 832. Now, what goes on the bottom? Well, it's that grand total again, 1571. Okay, 1571. Now, what about the probability of being male and in 10th grade? Well, now we need to look at the male category, but we're only interested in those that are male and they're in 10th grade. So those males that are in 10th grade, that's 320. And again, that's over our big total, 1571. Okay, now that we have these first three done, let's look at problem number four. Is being male and being in 10th grade independent? Well, here's our formula. We want to figure out, well, what's our, what's our first event? What's our P of A? Well, our first event is male. What's the probability of being male? That's our P of A, okay? What's our P of B? Well, that's the probability of being in 10th grade. And then our P of A and B, is what's the probability of being male and being in 10th grade, okay? So these are what we're gonna use now to fill in our formula, okay? So when we fill in our formula, we need that probability of A or that first event, and then we're going to multiply that by the probability of B, or in this case, that second event, the probability of being in 10th grade. We need a number for that. And then we're asking that question, are, do they equal? Do they equal? Okay. And then what do they equal? Well, do they equal the probability of being male and in 10th grade? So that's what we need to fill in. All right, so this first box, 
what is the probability of being male? Well, we figured that out. It's 832 over 1571. What goes in here? Well, that second event, or P of B, and in this case, the probability of being in 10th grade, and we figured that out. 605 over 1571, right? And then the question again, does it equal? Does it equal? And what is that? The P of A and B, that's what goes over here. And that's being male and in 10th grade, which we also found. So we're asking, do these two sides equal? And what we need to do is we need to find out what these multiplied together are, okay? Now this question has another part, this part where it asks another question. I'm gonna let you guys do that. But in order to solve this problem, we need to find out what the these two fractions are multiplied. How do we do that? Well, we do that by multiplying these fractions. And when you multiply fractions, you're just going to multiply straight across. Multiply the top, multiply the bottom. And that will give you another fraction here at the bottom, right? And then we can compare with the other side. We can say, well, does it equal what's over here? So let's go ahead and do that. And when we do that, we're just going to do that on our calculator. Okay. We're going to pull up our calculator and we're just going to say, well, what's 832 times 605? What does that equal? Well, we get kind of a big number, but that's all right. We get 503,360. 503,360. That's what our top number is. What's our bottom number? Well, we're going to go back to our calculator and we're just going to take that 1571 times 1571. That's like 1571 squared. And we're going to get 2,468,041. Okay, 2 million. 468,041. And now here's the question, does it equal 320 over 1571? Well, we really don't know at this point, do we? They don't look equal, but we need to simplify these numbers to find out if they actually are equal. So we're going to take these numbers and we're going to divide them out. We're going to simplify them and look at the decimals and see if it's any easier to tell. Because when they're in fractions like this, they're not all the way reduced. So we can't really tell. So we're going to pull our calculators back up and we're going to divide this out. We're taking that 503360 and we're dividing it by 2 million. 468,041. What's the decimal we get? Well, we get a big long decimal. We want to round to two places. That means two places past the decimal. And what rounding means is we look at that third digit and we say, if it's four or below, we're just going to leave the second digit as it is. But if it's five or above, we'll round up. We'll, we'll make it one, one more. But since this is three, we're going to leave it like it is. And we're going to go ahead and write our answer. So when we divide out that big, ugly number, what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get 0 0.20. Okay. That's what we get when we divide out. Well, what about this number? Okay, well, we need to divide that one too. So let's go ahead and divide 320 by 1571. What do we get? Well, here again, we get an, a long decimal. Since that third digit is less than four, we're gonna leave that zero alone. And so what we're gonna write here for our answer is 0 0.20. 
So this number here reduces to 0 0.20. This fraction here also re reduces to 0 0.20. So when we ask that question, do they equal? Well, what do we get? Well, guess what? They do equal. And so what we remember is that when they equal, when the two sides of the equation equal, they are independent. So when you write out your answer, since they are equal, they are independent events. Okay, make sure to show your work. You can do that by doing it on paper and uploading pictures of your paper. That's the best thing to do. Okay, thank you.